Got an email from Professor Estes three days before school started saying it's the 150th anniversary of Chapman this, this year. We're going to do an oral history of Chapman, videotaping um, interviews with all the people who have made Chapman's history special. And so I said, oh, great, when, when are we doing that? Like, next semester, next year? He's like, oh, no, we're, we're starting in the fall. It was just a matter of trying to find the resources to get the cameras. And Janelle Shear told us about uh, Panther Studios and uh, about uh, Pam, uh, Pam Azell and uh, said that uh, they had some space over there. And, and all we really did is show up at uh, Pam's doorstep. And she, right from the beginning, sort of stepped up to the plate and said, this is exactly what Panther Studios wants to get involved with. We've never done a project like this at Chapman, so it really um, was up to us students to kind of take, take a hold of the project on our own and really get it rolling. I was an archival intern at the Richard Nixon Library like a year or so ago, and so when I found out about like an oral project here, I thought it'd be cool to like get back into it, because I had a little bit of experience with it, so I thought I could contribute. <laughs> well, we had two workshops that uh, in which we were given the task of interviewing and operating the camera and uh, even after that I think that the uh, basics were so basic that we were able to just pick up the rest of the stuff as we went along. Technology is such a huge field I think that every every department's gonna have to like somehow incorporate that so it's kinda nice having a tech background a little bit. Other history classes you just get a textbook and you're listening to lectures where this the students are doing everything it's all hands-on we're interviewing people we're contacting them we're getting the history we're filming everything that we're doing has to be done by us this also kind of documents how these people will be a part of Chapman history forever it makes Chapman a part of their life it makes them a part of Chapman's life and the Chapman community and you know family, friends, the whole Orange County community can go back and look at this and say, this is why Chapman was special. For all the Disciples of Christ folks in Southern California, uh, California Christian College was their college. And uh, it was, I think, 1934 that they named it for Chapman. Oh, it was very small. It wasn't even part of a business school. It was part of the social sciences division. So there's an economics department that was part of the social sciences division. It seemed to me to be a kind of place where innovation could take place. It was a, a university on the move. It gave me many opportunities to come in with new and fresh ideas. And so it was kind of enticing. However, now when you look at us, we're not just a regional school. We're getting lots and lots of students from foreign countries and across the, you know, the country. Our job should be to make as many opportunities available to students that they can just take and run with. Instead of us doing things for them, let's try to set up as many possible things for them to do that they can kind of sink their teeth in and, and make their own. Eleven, I have a student. She's an undergraduate student and she's writing a couple of papers under my guidance. It's not just the time, I mean, in a large university you never have the chance of working with a student one-on-one. -on -one. We are always looking to the future for being that collaborative entity that transcends individual colleges and schools and provides that link to uh, multidisciplinary information. And we are also thinking about creating a center for visual and oral studies which would be a way for students to potentially um, have funding, uh, work with professors and maybe even have internships on projects that really incorporate a visual and oral dimension. And so this oral history project of Chapman's 150th anniversary will hopefully just be the first of many oral history projects that history students in the future will be able to undertake. Phi Alpha Theta is just a really special organization. It, it seems to, almost like magic, get people to say, gee, I'd like to do all sorts of things, and then actually makes them do it. I don't know, I don't know actually how that works exactly. We'll have the full interviews so that anybody can just come on if they want to see something for a specific department, they want to see a specific person, they can just go right to their interview.